So these right here are some droplets of mercury that I bought a long time ago. And as you can see, they look tarnished, but mercury itself doesn't tarnish. So that means they are impure, specifically with at least one impurity that does oxidize in air. I don't exactly know which impurity it is or what other impurities might be in it, but it does fail to wet glass, which means that the amount of impurity has to be relatively low, otherwise it would. Now, because I don't know exactly what kind of impurity it is, probably the only surefire way to remove it would be to distill it, but I don't have the equipment right now or a good working space to do that. So what I'm gonna try is just cleaning it with hydrochloric acid at room temperature. Hopefully whatever makes it tarnish like that is readily soluble in hydrochloric acid as well as its oxide so that I can clean it that easily. Unfortunately, or I guess for other applications, fortunately, the only hydrochloric acid I have is full strength. It's really concentrated. You can't really dissolve much more hydrogen chloride in water than what's in these two bottles. So before I add the acid, I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water to increase the volume and decrease the concentration to something more reasonable and also that fumes less. It also probably wouldn't hurt to make sure there's enough water to actually dissolve salts. Okay, uh, there's some mercury down there. It's already under some water that I added before I realized it wasn't filming exactly why there's more oxide on one blob than the other. I have no idea. It's possible that the oxide was mostly on or entirely on one cohesive blob and then some of the mercury from the inside of the blob escaped out and didn't have any oxide on it. I do think I'm gonna add a little more water, but I don't need much, so I don't think I'll add that much more. I just needed to clean it, so I don't even need some exact measurement. That should do just fine. Now a little bit of concentrated HCl. That'll be enough. It's concentrated, so we don't need that much. I didn't really see if there was any fizzing, Still can't really tell. Definitely behaving a little differently. Whatever's going on. I'm not sure if the lighting is ideal, but it's only been a few minutes, and at least in person it's clear that it's much shinier. So it seems to be working very well. Yeah, there you go. And it recombines much more readily than it did before. So that's all a very good sign. I'm gonna leave it overnight, and then I'll replace the dilute acid with just plain distilled water to suppress any vapors. It's interesting, in this view it's the reverse of the other one. In this one you can see the mercury easily on camera, in particular you can see how shiny it is, but you can't see it as well in person. I guess one other thing to notice here is that the water solution didn't change colors as it dissolved any of those impurities, so either they dissolved off in such a low concentration that there wouldn't be a color, or they're colorless in solution, because there wasn't even a hint of color right at the surface of the mercury, even shortly after I added it, my impression is that they're just colorless. So it half makes me wonder if the impurities weren't something like magnesium or zinc or something as opposed to, or maybe aluminum, I guess. I think aluminum can amalgamate with mercury. Yeah, it can. Aluminum could be the other one. Instead of something like iron or nickel or something like that, because those would have added color to the solution. So perhaps that gives us a clue as to at least some of what the impurity wasn't. I have come up to my recently repotted spore-grown Blechnum cycatifolium tree ferns. They're now called something else, although I can't remember exactly what it was changed to. Anyway, they're under these grow lights here, which means we can take a look at the mercury a little bit better. Okay, so you can see a little bit of particulate matter suspended in the solution in front of the mercury, but that can just be washed out later, that's not a problem. The mercury itself is nice and shiny. It's now been a full 24 hours. I will have to look at the footage in order to be sure if it's any shinier than it was just an hour or two after I put the acid in, but it looks like it might be. Either way, it's real pretty. 
One more little detail, this HCL bottle here I bought empty and totally clean. I got it basically because I thought the label looked cool and I also liked the shape of it and the fact that it was made out of glass. But I also figured that I could reuse it. It is designed for HCL after all and both enjoy the look of that old label along with the utility of it storing more concentrated HCL. The HCL that comes in these bottles here is almost exactly the same as what the label says here. It's ACS reagent grade and it is 36.5 to 38% which covers very tightly the 37% value that's listed on the bottle and it also is a similar volume. So I emptied the rest of the bottle that I poured a little bit from into the mercury into this one and disposed of that plastic bottle. I guess this does make me exceptionally nerdy that I actually like somewhat historical HCL bottles and prefer the HCL bottles that I have in storage to display a diverse array of designs, but nonetheless, it does make me happy. Now, I did think that this label also looks kind of cool, so on the bottle that I threw away, I was a bit sad to lose the label, and then I realized I could take it off really easily. In fact, it doesn't even seem like it's stuck on with adhesive. I'm not really sure how this label system works, but it seems to interact with the special material the bottle is made out of to adhere to it. It makes it plenty easy to remove, but it doesn't fall off on its own either. It does mean, though, that when I want to stick it to something else, I have to do it entirely with tape because it doesn't interact in whatever that special way is with other materials. Regardless, I put the label in the first place I could think of. I've got this general relativity textbook that I used in a general relativity class last semester, and it of course has a blank inside cover, so I taped it there. I'm wondering if I'm not the only one in the world with a general relativity textbook that has a hydrochloric acid bottle label taped to the inside cover. I'm not really sure what kind of accomplishment that is, but it does make me feel a little bit special. So I've been messing with this a little bit more, and that has gained me enough information to make me relatively sure I know what the impurity was. Previously in this video, I listed three possibilities, aluminum, zinc, and magnesium, based on the fact that it did dissolve in the acid and also didn't give the solution any kind of color. However, there are actually three problems with this list that I didn't think of at the time. The first is that aluminum oxide, while it can dissolve in hot hydrochloric acid, it doesn't dissolve that easily. I'm not sure it would have dissolved as quickly as we saw it dissolve if it had been an aluminum impurity. The second problem with this list is that zinc oxide, magnesium oxide, and aluminum oxide are all white, and the buildup of oxide layer on the original mercury was black, so it didn't seem like that was actually the most likely option. The third and final problem with that list is it doesn't include a fourth completely valid possibility, and that is lead. I didn't include it simply because I didn't happen to think of it while I was filming, but it's actually what I now think the impurity primarily was. First of all, it has the right oxide color. Lead does tarnish with the oxide to form that kind of gray-black color that we saw on the original blobs of mercury. Also, while lead chloride isn't very soluble in water, I had it under very dilute hydrochloric acid and there wasn't much there, so it is plausible that it could dissolve in the acid that it was under. Later on, I poured out that dilute acid because it had some particulate material that I mentioned in one of the clips previously, and I wanted to get it out. I then put it under more concentrated hydrochloric acid, and this gave me some important information. It was concentrated enough that the lead chloride might have trouble dissolving. Lead chloride isn't actually that soluble in water, and if there's that much extra chloride from the acid in the solution, it really might keep any lead chloride that formed precipitated. And that's exactly what happened. The mercury didn't stay shiny. It formed, instead of a gray layer, a white layer on it, which is the color of lead chloride. And when I diluted the acid, that white coating, which unfortunately I didn't think to film, I didn't realize it was going to be anything important, ended up dissolving. So cumulatively, this means that the impurity was some kind of metal that's soluble in mercury, forms a black oxide layer, a white chloride layer under concentrated hydrochloric acid, and completely dissolves away under dilute hydrochloric acid. With all that information, I really can't think of anything else it could be than some dissolved lead in the mercury. Anyway, I hope this video is interesting. Thanks for watching.